What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and today I'm gonna to be showing you more than 90 new features and changes found in iOS 14 beta one. Now there are probably more features and changes that I still have not discovered yet, so make sure you guys do subscribe to the channel so you don't miss my upcoming iOS 14 hidden features video and other videos I have planned covering all that's new in the software. All right, so this is gonna be a pretty long video, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. And also I would appreciate if you guys gave this video a thumbs up if you do enjoy it at any time throughout the video. Video. So anyways, first things first, widgets. So widgets are going to be the headlining feature, the main feature talked about when anybody discusses iOS 14. So you can see here, we have the stocks widget. If we go over a little bit, you can see I have one set up for batteries here. We have one for podcasts right here as well. Now, if you want to add a widget, all you have to do is press down anywhere where you have a blank space on your home page, or you can do it on an icon as well. And then you will see a little plus up here in the top left. If you tap on that, you will get the widgets section right here. You can see all the available widgets that you can add to your home screen. So as you can see there, we have a little map for maps. We have the calendar, we have weather, we have notes, we have batteries. We have all these different ones you can add right here. And all you have to do is go ahead and tap on it. And then you can see you get different views as well for the widgets to match you know, your home screen layout that you want. So you can do these little small ones that look like Apple Watch faces. You could do these little long ones right there. Then you could do the big one as well. So if you wanna add it, just do like so, and you can move it around on the screen as you can see right there, wherever you want. We also have what Apple is calling the smart stack. So if we go back into here, you can see we have smart stack right here and it says automatically rotates widgets to show the most relevant information throughout the day. It can also be flipped through easily. So if we go ahead and add that, you can see it adds this right here and we can just go ahead and swipe through that and see some relevant things that Apple thinks we wanna see at that given time. You can also 3D or haptic press on this and you can suggest that certain shortcut less or that certain widget less. You can also remove it all the way if you want to and you can edit it right here and you can rotate these however you want or you can have it set to smart rotate. Now going back to the first page, if we go ahead and swipe over to the right, you can see this is our today view where our widgets used to be in iOS 13 and now it's just a bunch of widgets over here which looks pretty cool and of course you can edit these just like you did in iOS 13. Just hold down, edit home screen, you'll see the edit button down there and this is where you can add third party widgets or of course you have the built in widgets right here as well that you can move around just like on your home screen. You will also notice that the search bar up top is different than it was in iOS 13. Now something else that's changed in iOS 14 is Siri. So let's go ahead and invoke Siri. And you can see, first of all, Siri does not take up the full screen anymore. We just get this little ball down here at the very bottom of the screen, and it's much less intrusive than it was in iOS 13. You can see you can press anywhere, swipe over to dismiss it if you want to. But hey Siri, what's the weather like right now? and take a look at how that appears and everything. Super clean and it doesn't take up the entire screen. Anyways, you can see there we have the little banner up top and then we have the little Siri down here as well with a nice little animation. So Siri looks a lot better and Siri is also a little bit more intelligent in iOS 14 as well. Now say you download an application but you don't want it to show up on your home screen or maybe you've downloaded applications in the past that kind of just take up space on your homepage anymore because you don't use them. Well now in iOS 14, you can actually hide applications from the home screen. So if you go to any application on your springboard and haptic press on it and you go to remove app, you will see you now get the option to add to library. So if we go ahead and do that, now all of a sudden it's gone from our springboard and it's in our app library now, which is on the last page of the springboard. So if you swipe over past the last page, you will get the app library right here, which has predetermined folders here, basically that just categorizes all of your applications that you have installed on your device and shows them right here. And if you tap on the search right here for the app library, this is where you can see every single application downloaded onto your device. And again, these could be applications in here that you've hidden from your home screen. Now also, if you go into your settings here and go to home screen, you will see you get this option here for new app downloads to either add to the home screen or only add to the app library. So from now on, if you don't necessarily want all your applications showing up on your home screen, you can set this to add to the app library only. That way they won't show up on your screen and they'll only show up on that last page there, which is the app library. You also have the option here for notification badges to show in the app library or not. So I don't know if you guys noticed this when I haptic pressed on these applications, but now in iOS 14, it is now remove app instead of delete app. As you can see here in iOS 13 on the left, this is iOS 14 here on the right. And also we have a little minus there on the right instead of a trash can like we had on iOS 13. Also, if you go to edit home screen, you'll see that we now have a minus sign to get rid of the applications instead of an X. 
like we had in iOS 13. You can also easily go back and forth between pages by simply haptic pressing on the little page dots down here. And you will see that little background show up on the page dots as well. And you can go quickly back and forth between all these applications. Now, if you go ahead and press and hold and edit the home screen and then tap on the page dots right there, you get the ability to hide pages. So if you go ahead and uncheck some of these, you will see that we have hidden pages on our springboard and you can no longer see those pages full of applications until you go back into editing the home screen and then going and tapping on the page dots right there. Then you can go ahead and re-enable those pages so they show up. We also get some minor changes to the control center. So you can see here we have some home-based features here. So we have the home pod showing up right there and we have home favorites for anything I use with HomeKit will now show up in the control center here. Everything else is the same. You can also disable this if you want to. So if you go into your settings right here and then go to control center, you have show home controls right there. And if you disable that, you will have a control center that looks just like iOS 13. The only difference in iOS 14 is the addition of the home controls right there. So also one thing you will notice in iOS 14 is that you were able to instantly get to the toggles right here, the controls and you know change them around, change the order and everything. Whereas in iOS 13, you had to go into control center and then into customize controls. So you have to take an additional step in iOS 13 to get to this section right here. And we also get some new control center controls. So we have sound recognition and also sleep mode that you can add to the control center. As you can see, the icons are showing up there at the very bottom. Now, another change has to do with copying and pasting text from one application to another. So if you go ahead and copy some text here from notes, and then we go over to Safari and paste it, you can see there it says Safari pasted from notes. So it basically just shows where text was copied from and where it was pasted into in case you just didn't know what you were doing or you didn't know where that text came from. Now, one of my favorite hidden features in iOS 14 that Apple did not talk about is called back tap. So if we go into our settings here and go to accessibility and then go down to touch and then go all the way down to the bottom, you will see back tap and it says double or triple tap on the back of your iPhone to perform actions quickly. So if we go ahead and tap on that, you can see I have a double tap set up for control center and a triple tap set up for screenshots. So what this does is it's basically just what it sounds like. You just tap the back of your iPhone to basically do what you have it set to do in here. And actually, if you go into here, you can see you can do a lot of different things, like a lot. So we have shortcuts you can implement this with. You can have you know app switcher, home, lock screen, mute, screenshot, Siri, volume up, volume down, you know, all types of different things you can do in here. So I have mine set to control center. So if we just simply double tap the back, you can see it will pull up the control center like that, do it again, and it will put the control center back up. Now, if I do a triple tap, it just took a screenshot just like so, which is crazy. I'll do it one more time, another screenshot just like that. It actually works extremely well for being in the first beta right now. So once iOS 14 actually gets out to the public later this year, I can only imagine how great this feature is gonna be. I think a lot of people are going to absolutely love this feature. Now going back into settings, if we go to sounds and haptics right here, you'll notice a new setting right here for headphone audio and it's called reduce loud sound. So if you go ahead and enable this, you actually have a limit to the sounds in your AirPods. So like you can't turn your AirPods to a certain decibel level. And you can read down below that it says, iPhone can analyze your headphone audio and reduce any sound that is over a set decibel level. And you can see 85 decibels is as loud as heavy city traffic. If you put it like all the way up, to 100 decibels as loud as an ambulance siren. So pretty interesting. Also in iOS 14, we finally get a new incoming call UI that doesn't take up the entire screen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give myself a call real quick and take a look at this. So that is the new incoming call UI in iOS 14. It's just a small little banner there with a decline and an answer call right there. You can go ahead and do whatever you want on your phone while the phone is ringing. And you don't have to you know, worry about it taking up the entire screen or having to press ignore right away. You could just basically ignore it without letting the person know you're ignoring them. So finally, that is a feature here in iOS 14. I think a lot of us have been waiting on that for a long time now. Now, I also wanna point out that you can do this little gesture here and get this in full screen. And then you can go ahead and swipe up again and you will get this little icon in the top left status bar showing that you have a FaceTime call ringing right there. If you tap on it again, it pulls up this view 
and you can go ahead and do whatever you want on your iPhone while that is ringing. And speaking of FaceTime, there's also a nice new feature added in iOS 14 that is for sign language prominence. So iOS 14 can now detect when a participant in a group FaceTime call is using sign language and that person will be prominent at all times. So their bubble will always be big so people can see them using you know, sign language on the group FaceTime call. And speaking of the camera application, if we go into the camera application here and go ahead and tap on this little arrow right here, you can see we get a new option here for exposure compensation. So this is going to allow you to lock the exposure for photos and videos, which is really nice. This is not a feature in iOS 13, and this is definitely something that's needed for these great cameras in the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro. But that's not all that got added to the camera. So if we go into our settings here and go all the way down to camera, you will see quite a few new settings in here. So first off, we have use volume up for burst. So for this, you can use the volume up to take burst photos in the camera application. Also, if we scroll down a little bit further, you can see we have prioritize faster shooting for photo capture. So it says, intelligently adapt image quality when rapidly pressing the shutter. And then another feature I think a lot of people are going to like is the mirror front camera. So now when you take a selfie, it's not gonna look like you're backwards. You're gonna be able to mirror it to look natural and a lot better. So that's another new feature here added in iOS 14. So if we go into the photos application and we go to our all photos section right here, you'll see in iOS 14, we now have a little bit of a different view than we had in iOS 13, which is here on the left. We have these three little dots up here in the top right whereas we did not have this in iOS 13. And from here, we can zoom in, we can filter, and we can show a map as well of where these photos were taken. If we go to filter, you can see you can filter it by favorites, edited photos and videos, or you can just show all. And then of course, like I said, we do also have the option here for show map. So it'll show the map of where everything was taken, where all the photos were taken. Now, Apple continues to put emphasis on privacy, whether that's through their products, through their software, just really their branding now is known for privacy. So you had to expect some great new privacy features coming to iOS 14, and you will not be disappointed with what Apple brought to the table. So we go into our settings here and then go up and go down to privacy. You will see we have a new option here for tracking. So this says allow apps to request to track Allow apps to ask to use an identifier that can be used to combine your activity across apps and websites. Now that's cool, but we also have something even better. So if we go into our settings here and go to location services and we go down to just any application, you can see now we have a toggle for precise location. So it says allows apps to use your specific location. With this setting off, apps can only determine your approximate location. So for most apps, you may not want to have your precise location on except for, you know, maybe like your maps applications and anything where you really need to know your specific location. Otherwise you could just use kind of a, a more broad location from your iPhone. So that could be beneficial for a lot of people who are concerned about their privacy online, but it doesn't end there. So Apple also added a nice new feature, a really subtle feature that's going to show you when an application was using your microphone or your camera maybe with or without you knowing. So for instance, let's just go into camera and take a look up in the very top right. You will see a little green dot right there. If you go ahead and swipe down, you will see from the control center, we have to do it. You will see a little camera right there and it says camera is being used right now. So green is for camera. So anytime you see the green dot up in the top right of your iPhone, that means that the camera is being used. Now we also have an orange one for when your microphone is being used or was recently being used. So you can see if we swipe down now, it says camera recently. Since we went out of the camera application, it'll still show up and show that it was recently being used by the camera application. Now, if you go ahead and do something that uses the microphone, you can see we get a little orange dot up in the top right of our status bar right there. I'm gonna go ahead and end this and delete that and go ahead and swipe down from the control center. And it says messages recently used the microphone. So this is a really cool privacy feature because sometimes you know there are sketchy websites out there. And if you grant access to Safari, sometimes you know some of the sketchy ones can use your microphone or your camera without you knowing. But now you will pretty much always know. You will just have to look for that little dot up in the top right of your iPhone. If we go into our settings and go to accessibility, you'll see for voiceover, we do have a new icon. That top icon right there is changed in iOS 14, the little speaker is on the bottom left instead of up top of the little character there and also in voiceover we have some new features in here as well so you can see first off we have voiceover recognition and if we tap on that you can see we get image descriptions you have screen recognition you have text recognition and also the feedback style you can have it either play a sound 
speak or do nothing. And if we go back and then back again and scroll down a little bit, you can see we also have sound recognition right here. So this is something that I'm pretty excited about because I think this is going to be huge for a lot of people with either you know hearing disabilities or they were born with disabilities, you're gonna be able to now have sound recognition. So it says your iPhone will continuously listen for certain sounds and using on-device intelligence will notify you when sounds may be recognized. And if we tap on sounds right here, you'll see the exact type of sounds we're talking about. And this will make a little bit more sense to you. So basically imagine somebody is deaf or is very hard of hearing or just has some disability and they can't hear properly your iPhone will now alert you when it detects a fire sound, like the sound of a fire alarm, the sound of a siren, the sound of a smoke alarm, or if you have an animal, maybe your cat or dog needs to be fed, but you know, you're deaf and you can't hear that, your iPhone will pick up on the sound of a cat or a dog making a noise. And you can see for household appliances here as well, you know, car horn, doorbell, door knock, water running, and baby crying, and you know, somebody shouting or a baby shouting as well. You have all these options in here that is going to be extremely beneficial for those hard of hearing or those who cannot hear. And if we go back to accessibility and go down to audio visual right here, you can see we do also have a new feature here called headphone accommodations. And it says right here, you can customize the audio for supported Apple and Beats headphones. And if you go ahead and turn this on, it says once enabled, you can customize the audio for your Beats or your Apple headphones by adjusting the settings or through custom audio setup. So if you go ahead and tap on that, you can see you can change the tune audio. So for if you want a balanced tune or a balanced tone rather, if you want the vocal range, the brightness, you could change all these settings in here, which is pretty cool. And you can have it set for media and phone calls or one or the other. So now if we go back to our settings and go to our general and then go to our storage right here, you'll see now we can search in the iPhone storage section inside of our settings. So if you have a lot of applications installed and you're curious about how one application is stacking up, like how much memory it's taking up, you can now search for that application in here. So if I wanna search for Spotify, you can see I can search for it right there and I can simply delete it or you know see whatever information I wanted to now by a simple search in iPhone storage. So now let's talk about the music application because the music application got one of my favorite overhauls here in iOS 14. So we're gonna compare this to iOS 13 on the left and you can already see a pretty big difference just from the bottom bar right there. So the bottom navigation bar, it used to be library for you, browse, radio, search. Now it's listen now, browse, radio, library, search. So yes, for you is now listen now, and it does look a lot better as well. It looks a lot cleaner, just everything it has listed in here, the top picks, the stations for you, the music for you, everything looks a lot better here in iOS 14 than it did in iOS 13. iOS 13 was just very bare bones for this section right here. And then browse right here, you can see we do also have different icons for browse right there and listen now for you. You can see just different icons all around for everything except for radio and search. All right, so now let's take a look at the now playing screen in the music app in iOS 14. So notice the difference? I don't, I don't know, do you guys see a difference at all? Yeah, iOS 14 looks so much better for the now playing screen. And you can see the little moving gradient in the background just looks awesome and looks night and day better than it did in iOS 13. You also notice that the controls are also a little bit lower and everything is a little bit closer together. It's not as spread out as it was in iOS 13, so it's a lot easier to you know reach everything right here. And if we go to up next or the music queue right here, you can also see that we don't have any lines like we had in iOS 13, so just some overall cleaner look as far as the up next songs go right here. And also on the far right, you'll notice that new option right there. It looks like an infinity sign that is called autoplay. So now when you reach the end of like a song or a playlist, Apple Music will find similar songs to play so that you never run out of music to listen to. So you're never gonna have like a pause in your music, which is really nice. And it's about time Apple added something like that. We also see a change to the playlist view. So this is what the playlist view looks like in iOS 14 compared to iOS 13. We have a big picture right there with the title and whoever curated it down there in the middle. And the play and shuffle buttons are also now filled with red instead of being that ugly gray background right there. We also have the download up in the top right, whereas it was you know right there in the bottom in iOS 13. And speaking of music, Apple also implemented some new features for the AirPods and AirPods Pro in iOS 14. So the biggest one is going to be spatial audio 
for the AirPods Pro. So you're now gonna have spatial audio features to essentially replicate movie theater type sound. And for all AirPods, not just the AirPods Pro, you're also going to have automatic device switching. So now if you, you know, wanna switch from one device to another, like an iPad to an iPhone or an iPhone to a MacBook, you're gonna be able to just do that seamlessly now without having to manually connect to them. And you'll also now be getting low battery alerts, like when you get 10% battery on your AirPods Pro case or on a specific AirPod itself, you will now get an alert on your iPhone showing that the battery is low on your AirPods. And then finally, we also have optimized battery charging for AirPods. This is another long overdue feature. I feel like this should have been added a while back when optimized battery charging was first introduced for the iPhone, but now we have that for the AirPods. So it's gonna charge them up you know, when it thinks you're gonna start using them just like it does for your iPhone. We also got some nice new features added to the Messages application in iOS 14. As you can probably already tell up top, we have pinned conversations now. So you can now pin conversations to the top and they'll show up as bubbles or in Apple's case right there, the Apple support, it shows up as a square for some reason but you can now have pinned conversation. So all you have to do is simply swipe over on one of these conversations and then just go ahead and tap on pin and you will see it does pin that conversation right there. You can have up to nine pinned conversations in iOS 14. If you want to unpin them, just go ahead and tap and hold on it and go ahead and unpin right there. Or you can also tap on edit and edit pins and you can edit them right there. So you can take some out right there if you want to, just like so. And if we go into a group chat, you will also see some changes here in the group chat. So first of all, up top, you can see where it shows all the people up there. It does look a little bit different. All the bubbles are spread out. I kind of like how that looks right there. If we go into the information for this, you can also see there's a change right here. So we have change name and photos. You can add a photo to the group chat. That's going to be just like the main photo that everybody in the group chat is going to see. Also now in group chats, you can mention specific user so for instance if I just wanted to respond to Jonathan here who just replied or who just sent this tweet right here I just type in the at sign and then type in the first name Jonathan it turns gray that's how you know you did it right if it turns gray then press space and you'll see it turns blue and then I can send something and it will only you know it'll show that it was sent to him and if he has the option turned on where he only gets notifications if he's mentioned he will only you know, get the notification when I mention him like I did right here. And by the way, you can see that setting for only getting notifications when you're mentioned. If you go into your settings and go to messages and then scroll all the way down here and you will see notify me right here. It says when this is on, you will be notified when your name is mentioned, even if conversations are muted. And if we swipe over on a conversation, you'll see that in iOS 14, we now get the icons instead of saying hide alerts and delete. We now get the corresponding icons, just a little mute switch there and a little trash can. Then also if you take a look at the top of messages, you'll notice that we have a cleaner compose button up in the top right than we did in iOS 13 over here on the left and then edits over on the far left instead of being right next to Compose like it was in iOS 13. We also don't have that big, bold messages over there on the top left. It's in the very top and it's not near as big. Now also if you go to the info of a contact, you will see it's a lot cleaner now. We have the call, video, mail, info right there. We have hide alerts. Everything is just a lot cleaner in the layout here in iOS 14 when you go and view a contact. And then finally for messages, and this isn't just messages, but I will show you this in here, you can now search emojis. So if you tap on the emoji icon, you will see you now get the option to search emojis. So you can see you can scroll right here on some of the ones you like. And then also if you wanted to search for something like, I don't know, surprised, you can see these are all the icons, the emojis you get for being surprised. Of course, you can do that for anything you want. If you want something for love, you can see all these right there. So it's pretty cool that you can now search for emojis straight from the keyboard right here. We do also have emoji stickers and there are also new emojis as well. So if we go ahead and tap on this, you will see there are some new emojis. If we go ahead and try to customize, you can add things like face masks, there's like gray hair now, just a lot of different things with Memojis. Another headlining feature in iOS 14 is picture and picture. So if we go to Safari and start playing a video, you can see we have picture and picture right here. We can make it bigger, make it smaller. You can move it to different corners or different edges of the iPhone screen while we're doing other things on our phone, which is really nice. Unfortunately, this does not work in the YouTube application. It only works in Safari and Netflix and applications like that. But it is pretty nice that we finally have picture in picture on the iPhone. You can see we have the controls there for going back and forward, 15 seconds, the pause. Of course, we go ahead and do this. It puts it back in full screen. We can also swipe it off the page like that. So if you want it to be 
you know, off your springboard for just a minute, you can do that and then swipe back over to bring it back on the page and then just X out if you don't want to view it anymore. Now, speaking of Safari, we do also have some new features in Safari. So if you go ahead and tap on these two little A's up in the top left, of the address bar, we have tracking report. So this is new and this goes back to the privacy I was talking about with Apple, how they're focusing on privacy. This is going to show you what Safari has blocked from different websites you've accessed. So you can see here, it says Safari prevents trackers from following you across websites. And the last 30 days, I have three known trackers prevented. 50% of websites contacted trackers. And you can see here, it shows exactly which websites they came from. So google.com and youtube.com. And if you go to trackers, which you can't click on right now, but you will be able to in future betas, you'll be able to see exactly what those trackers were. We also have translation built into Safari now. So inside of Safari, if we go onto a website that's not in our native language that we speak, if we go to those two A's up on the top left and go to translate to English, in my case, you can see it translates it super quickly and it's very accurate as you can see right there everything on the web page is translated if you go ahead and tap on this you can also go back to view original if you want to and then another small detail i noticed is that if you tap and hold on the little tabs down here in the bottom right you get a new view here showing these tabs it looked a little bit different in ios 13. as you can see this is how it looked in ios 13. so it took up a lot more real estate on the page whereas in ios 14 it's a lot more compact and a lot cleaner looking. Now, speaking of translating, we also got a brand new application in iOS 14 called Translate. And this is going to do exactly what it sounds like. It's going to translate text, whether it's through actual typing out text or voice. So you can voice text and it can translate that in real time. So if I know how to say something in English, but I wanna hear it in Spanish, I can either type it out or I could just say it. Hello, how are you doing today, ma'am? And you can see right there, it shows exactly what that is. In Spanish, you can see how quickly it worked, which is really cool. And if you go ahead and tap on this, you can also change the languages right here. You can download certain ones as well. You can have automatic detection. So it says when this is on, translation will automatically detect which of the two languages is being spoken. And then you have favorites over here as well. It'll show your recents and your favorites right there. So pretty cool and gonna be very beneficial for a lot of people. The notes application also got a nice little facelift here in iOS 14. You could see even from just this page right here, you could see that the notes application looks a little bit cleaner. Now, if we go into an actual note right here, you'll start seeing some other changes as well. So first off, we have these three little dots up in the top right here in iOS 14, whereas we do not have that in iOS 13. And from here, you could do quite a few different things. So we have scan, we have pin, we have lock, we have delete, we have add people, send a copy, find a note, we have lines and grids, and we also have handwriting feedback if you wanna get feedback on your handwriting. And then if we go all the way back to the very front of the notes application, you'll see where we have the folders. The folders layout looks a little bit cleaner here in iOS 14 as well. We have the compose at the bottom right and the new folder in the bottom left, whereas in iOS 13, we had new folder in the bottom right and we didn't even have composed new note in this section at all. And then also in dark mode, we get a true black in iOS 14, whereas in iOS 13, it was kind of like this dark gray color when you entered into dark mode in the notes application. So it looks a lot better in dark mode on iOS 14. The calendar app also got some nice new features here in iOS 14. So if we go to add an event, for both of these, you will see that once we go to the selection for selecting the date and the time, you'll see a nice difference here in the selector. So the time selector and just the overall look is a lot cleaner and a lot easier to recognize or just to you know realize the actual time that you're setting this event for. And if you just wanted to do this, you can see you can just type in like 250, just like that, instead of having to sit here and scroll through you know the times like that, which could take a little while and it doesn't even show the full calendar while you're doing that either. So it's a lot better looking in iOS 14. I think it's a lot more practical for setting up events in calendar. And then if we go to the list view, you can see the list view here in iOS 14 also looks cleaner than it did in iOS 13. We don't have all these random lines and you know the, the gray backgrounds on the dates. It just looks a lot cleaner here in iOS 14. So in the clock application, the bedtime feature is now built into alarm right here. So we no longer have a bedtime tab down at the bottom. It's just alarm. And from here, you actually have to go into the health application. So it says sleep is now in health. So set up in health. And from here, you can actually change, you know, how much sleep you want to get. So say I only wanted to get, you know, six and a half hours of sleep. We can go to next. And from here, we could set our first schedule. So we could set, you know, I'm not going to get to bed till five o'clock tonight. So I'm going to wake up at, I guess, 11.50 a.m. And you can see here we have alarm options down here. So wake up and you can set, you know, your sound, how loud you want it, snooze and things like that. Go ahead and click on add. And we have it right here. Let's go to next. 
And then of course we will want to enable sleep mode, which is a great new feature here in iOS 14. You can see here, it can actually get a sleep mode view right there. So that's what it's gonna look like on your lock screen. And from here, you could set a wind down. So it says sleep mode can begin before bedtime to reduce distractions to help you relax. This also turns on do not disturb. So that may be something you want to consider. I'll do it for 15 minutes right here. You can also have shortcuts. I'm gonna skip that. And then you get a summary of your sleep schedule that you have set up right there. And now you will see a graph of everything here as well inside of the health application. And if we go back to the clock application, you can see right here under alarm, we have this alarm right here. If you go to change, it will open it up just like so. And you could change that in here if you want to without having to go all the way back into the health application. The timer in the clock app also looks a little bit better with that gray background versus the lines that we had here in iOS 13. We also got some nice improvements to the weather application. So let's go ahead and check out weather. You can see right here, right underneath the current temperature, it shows the high and the low right there. So it says 91 and 75. Of course, we did not see that in iOS 13 over here on the left-hand side. And then also you can see right here for the upcoming forecast, it shows the percent of rain that is expected versus just showing, you know, that we're expecting storms tomorrow. It shows 60%, 30%, and then you can see 40% down here. If we scroll down, you'll see we also do get a little graphic here for the air quality. And if we go to somewhere where it's raining right now, so let's say Orlando, I don't know if it's raining there. Let's try to find somewhere where it's raining right now. So you can see right here, it's raining in the city and it shows now how long it's going to be raining for. So it shows the next hour forecast, it shows rain for the next hour. But if it's gonna stop in like 30 minutes, it would show, you know, rain's gonna stop in 30 minutes. So this is a feature taken directly from Dark Sky which Apple just recently purchased. So I'm definitely not surprised to see a lot of weather improvements here in iOS 14, because a lot of these were probably taken from the Dark Sky application. So I would also imagine that the forecast is going to be more accurate now in weather than it was in previous versions because of that access to probably the API and a lot of the internals of Dark Sky. We also see a minor change in the reminders application here in iOS 14. We now get the option to add a new reminder down in the bottom left of iOS 14, whereas in iOS 13, you had to actually go into like today or something like that, and then you could add a new reminder. So inside the home application, we got quite a few new changes. I cannot show all of these, but one of the big ones is adaptive lighting for smart light bulbs. So basically it's going to change the lighting in your house depending on the time of day and the brightness and everything like that. So that'd be really cool if you do have smart bulbs set up with HomeKit. And then if you have a video camera or a video doorbell, you also get facial recognition and activity zones for those video cameras and doorbells. Now in the app store, we finally get autocomplete for the search. So if you're searching for something and you know you want it to autocomplete it so you can save some time, you can now do that. As you can see, we have the R right there, whereas in iOS 13, I typed out the same thing and we do not get that. If I tap search, it will automatically put that R in there and it goes to timer. And also in the app store, we finally got Game Center back here in iOS 14. So you can now see all your achievements, your friends, the games you've played and things like that as well. So if you guys wanna add me on Game Center, that is my Game Center username. And that is now back. You can also get to this from the settings. If you go into your settings down here, and then go down to Game Center right here. You will see it right here in the Game Center settings as well. We also have a new feature called App Clips. So this is going to allow you to use features in an application without fully downloading the application itself. So like if you're wanting to park somewhere, but you don't wanna download the application you know, used for the parking, you can just scan a QR code and it will install a certain part of the application and allow you to use the functionality of it without installing the full application and the clips that you have will show up right here. Also in the health application, we have a new section for mobility. And in here you can see we have double support time, six minute walk, you know, stair speed and things like that. This is a section that we did not have in iOS 13 in the health application. Now, if you take a screenshot in iOS 14 and compare it to iOS 13, you'll see some minor UI changes. And I'm specifically talking about the undo and redo buttons. You can see how they're centered here on iOS 14, whereas they're offset to the right in iOS 13. Some other minor changes you can see here in settings, iTunes and App Store is no more. It's now just App Store in iOS 13 here in the settings. Also, if you go down a little bit further, you'll see that passwords and accounts is now just passwords and the accounts is now actually in mail. So no longer it's in password and accounts. That's how you used to be able to get to your mail and add accounts. So it's kind of strange how it was in there, but now it's actually in mail itself, thankfully. So now in here you have accounts and from here you can go ahead and add your email accounts in a section that actually makes sense 
called accounts. In the reminder settings, we have a new toggle here for assignment notifications. So it says get notified when someone assigned a reminder to you. And in the maps settings, we now have the preferred type of travel. We can have it set to cycling now, whereas we only had driving, walking, and transit in iOS 13. And same for directions. We can have that set to cycling right here. We can actually you know, toggle some features for cycling, whereas you could not even do anything with that in iOS 13. So you can see you can avoid hills, stairs, and busy roads. And then instead of driving and navigation, it's now navigation and guidance. And you can see a few different changes here inside of these settings. Really no new features, just a changed layout of this section. And then up at the very top of your settings where you have your iCloud, you can see the verbiage has changed there. So instead of Apple ID, iCloud, iTunes, and App Store, it's now Apple ID, iCloud, Media, and Purchases. And then finally, I wanted to show you guys the new wallpapers here in iOS 14. So you can see we have these three new wallpapers right here. This is what the first one looks like. This is what the second one looks like. That's the one I have on right now. And then this is what the third one looks like right there. If you guys want to download these, if you're not on iOS 14, I will have a link for that down in the description below as well. So you can enjoy these iOS 14 wallpapers, even if you are not on iOS 14. But anyways, guys, there you have it. Those are over 90 new features and changes here in iOS 14 beta one. Like I mentioned, there probably are more and I will definitely be making more videos on features and changes here in iOS 14. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this super Super long video and if you made it to the end I would appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up and of course make sure you guys do subscribe so you don't miss my hidden features in iOS 14 coming up very soon and of course I will be covering all the other new software from Apple as well so definitely stay tuned for all of that but anyways guys it just turned 4 a.m. I gotta get out of here thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon